Hello, hello everyone. It's Stray Fay here with another episode of Cupid Parasite. All right, there was another plot twist on Alan's route after after getting done in by him. Uh, we got reincarnated. Lynette got reincarnated as herself, as as Lynette. Um, she's lived a life of a human. She's kind of just following the same footsteps, to be honest. Uh, right now, she's a college student studying romantic psychology. Um, her friends are kind of the same friends, like Clarice is there. Um, instead of Gil being there, there there's, there's Guile. <laughs> so, like, it's kind of like a repeat of her last life, just like 20 years into the future. Um... But there's a little twist, um, since she's reincarnated as a human, but technically still is a god, um, her soul is very tempting to other demons. So, Alan has just kind of been acting in the shadows as, as a protector. Um, but he's revealed himself. So, I guess Lynette, Lynette wants to thank him. Uh, for helping her, preventing her from drowning from the black shadow. All right, and hopefully I'm not too sniffly. Um, it's heckin' windy outside, so um, of course my immune system has to destroy itself. <laughs> so I'm doing everything I can to like keep the dust down. But yeah, but hopefully I don't have to like stop things to like blow my nose too much. All right, let's start. The promised Sunday came. <laughs> right, his name is Guilty. <laughs> Alan is is known as Guilty now. Guilty and I arrived at the beach. Wow. Oh, okay. We're no, no shirts. Oh, hey. It's dangerous to run like that. You should warm up first. Heh <laughs> I know. Like a little kid. We stretched out together and ran towards the waves. I was wearing my swimsuit th so that I could fully enjoy the water. I felt the waves on my feet and smelled the scent of the sea. Haha, <laughs> it feels so good! The water was cold and the sands being dragged out by the waves under my soles felt t ticklish. And the briny breeze ruffled my hair. My mind finally processed that I was at the beach. It's the sea. It's been so long. The last time I visited the sea was when I nearly drowned as a child. From the distant horizon, I felt both endless possibility and terrifying uncertainty that I might lose everything. If I let myself get distracted for even a second, I'm sure I'm gonna get dragged down. <laughs> Just live her life terrified that, like, something's out to kill her. It's horrifying. And it's like... I mean, she's probably, like, adapted to it somewhat, because, like, she's been living an, a completely new life. Uh, with only vague memories of, like, a past life. But still, this, this, that's not a nice thing to get used to. I crouched down in the surf and mixed the sand with my fingertips. I can smell the ocean. I pick up a fallen shell and toss it in the sea. Suddenly the bracelet on my wrist came into view. Oh no! I forgot to take off the bracelet! When I tried to slide it from my wrist, a shadow fell over me. Please don't take that off. Guilty placed his hand softly over mine. Or over my hand. <laughs> it's nice that you're taking care of it. But it's better for you to keep wearing it. You should have put like a spell that like keeps it forever clean or something. Huh? But it's made out of rubber so it might snap and break. Don't worry. It won't break so easily. Lots of heart was put into it. How strange. Did you know the person who made the bracelet? I wanted to ask him, but couldn't find it within myself to do so. Come on, we're at the beach, so try moving over here instead of sticking to the shallows. So she, he's luring her to the depths. Okay. I stood up and stepped in further into the water. Looking out at the sea, I was excited, but also a little afraid. Could help but worry about getting dragged down again. Thinking about what invisible hands might be waiting for me in there, I started to shiver. Here, take my hand. He 
Hilti noticed that I was afraid and reached out for me. I nervously grabbed his hand. O okay. It'll be fine. Hilti is with me. With my heart pounding, I slowly walked towards the deeper side. The water came up to my ankles, then my knees, and my hips. I'm scared. What should I do if I start drowning again? I closed my eyes, guided only by Guilty's hand as I stepped deeper into the water. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of trust for someone that, like, you just met the other day. <laughs> then he suddenly lifted me up. Huh? When I opened my eyes, I saw that he was using both of his arms to carry me. He was lifting my head above his height. I wasn't used to it. I grasped onto his shoulder so I didn't fall. Here. It's not scary anymore, right? Guilty was lifting me up like how a father would for a child. It wasn't intimate or sensual or anything like that, so it made me smile naturally. I mean, kinda is because of like your sizes. You're not like a child, you're an adult woman. Yeah, I don't feel afraid anymore. As long as he held me, I knew I didn't have to worry about that dark cloud or getting dragged beneath the waves. I never felt so comfortable before. It almost made me cry. The feeling was totally different from Guile, Austin, or even Claris. I felt so secure. I discovered I was able to relax with no problem. With Guilty by my side, I knew everything would be alright. <laughs> the sea is so amazing. With all these waves, it's totally different from a pool. My legs floated through the rippling water. The sensation was so interesting, I wiggled my legs back and forth. Why don't you try peeking in the water next? I think you'll like what you see. <laughs> I've never like... I don't know, I never try to like look into uh, the ocean water. Although, I think like the ocean water around here is pretty murky. Um, I, get, I guess there are some, some shallows that are like crystal clear. But yeah, I just feel like all the salt and the debris is like... Uh, yeah, I don't want to open my eyes down there without goggles. In the water? I looked down at the ocean with my hands, clutching his shoulders. The surface of the water was glittering in the sunlight so beautifully. I let out a gasp. Ah, so beautiful. I never realized just how clear the water around Los York could be. Hey, over there, there's a fish! Haha, <laughs> so there is. Guilty, Guilty's laugh caused his shoulders to bob. His radiant smile filled my heart with joy. The core out here is beautiful, too. Do you want to dive and see? Yes! As I nodded, Guilty gently led me down. And then he took my hand and gently kissed the bracelet on my wrist. No. <laughs> The parted lips made me pause. He just kissed my bracelet, but I can feel my entire body pounding. It's so you don't drown. I didn't understand how that would help. Also, I didn't understand why he was so concerned with the bracelet. Also, Lynette, shouldn't you be... Shouldn't you be like, I just met this guy. No. <laughs> She's like, I trust you. Down to my very soul, I trust you. Guilty then took the goggles as if nothing happened. Oh, okay, you got goggles. I'm gonna just open your eyes in the salt water. Salt water will sting your eyes, so put these goggles on. He was taking care of me like he would for a small child. Just like from a long time ago. Huh? What do you- what do I mean by a long time ago? I thought about it for a second, then just shrugged and put my goggles on and dove in. Oh. Wow! It's the ocean. Going beneath the waves was like entering a different world. Fish of all shapes and colors are swimming in and out of the coral. So beautiful! I looked over at Guilty and our eyes met. He was obviously having as much fun as I was. His kind, compassionate eyes seemed as if he were looking at a beloved family member. 
eyes that I had fallen in love with. Oh no, your memories are like all screwed up. Since we were underwater, I couldn't say anything, but I reached out for him. When I touched his arms, a feeling like a bolt of ele electricity ran through me. A feeling of connection deeper than that of any pair of lovers. It was like a single soul had been split in two. I knew it! They have to be like... They have to be part of a pair! His lips moved as if you were trying to say something. I could see bubbles escaping and making their way to the surface. It felt as if he called my name. Not my current name, but my true name. The sun was shining bright as I surfaced to breathe. Whew! Haha. <laughs> How was it? Was it fun? I looked over at Guilty and saw him smiling as he ran his fingers through his hair. It was a different expression than before. The kind of look he only makes when he's off in the distance. Yes. Without a doubt, it was fun. But I also felt like I was so close to figuring something out. So I just scooped up a handful of water and tossed it at him. Okay, he's like, hmm, what is this weird feeling? Alright, let's just play. Because I want him to be his true self. Here! Whoa. Heh. <laughs> Did I surprise you? I'm gonna splash you until you surrender to me. <laughs> How cute. Sure, let's play. I won't go easy. He gave me a wry smile and splashed water back at me. That, that's cold! Why you? It was, it really was cold and pretty salty, but it was still a lot of fun. The water sparkled as it flew through the air and reflected the sun. I realized that I didn't fear the sea anymore. We played to our heart's content. I enjoyed the sea as if I was making up for all that lost time. We ate the sandwiches Guilty had brought on, bought on the way here, then played in the sea for the rest of the day. Before long, the sun started to close in on the horizon. The ocean is just as beautiful as at sunset as it is during the day. Oh god. Ah, uh, I still remember the last time we were at the beach at sunset. Uh, I don't think he'll stab us again, right? As the evening cool settled in, we got out of the water, got dressed, and started walking along the beach together. The sand made a pleasant sound as it crunched beneath our feet. I don't want to go home. I want to stay here and look at the sea forever. So, how was it? Were you scared of the sea today? That gentle tone of voice told me just how kind Guilty really was. Uh, it was fun. Pick option three. No. Thanks to you, I was able to have a lot of fun today. I'm happy to hear you had a good time. Hearts. I probably didn't didn't get a leg cramp or didn't get dragged into the water thanks to him. However, I couldn't explain why I felt as though I would find myself in constant danger if he left. Look, the sun is setting. Ah. I looked up and saw the red sun slowly dropping to the horizon. The sunset made the surface of the water glitter and shine. Suddenly, the memory of those hands came flooding back. And the white flower crown and the entire pretend wedding. I think I must have put on a wedding here when I was a kid. I was just mumbling to myself when I heard a sharp gasp from behind me. Huh? I realized I was being hugged from behind. The hands in front of me were shaking. 
Behind me, I can hear heavy breaths trying to hold back sobs. Clenching his teeth, Guilty was grunting softly with effort, enduring an anguish I couldn't see. Was that... Guilty? A young man from my memory, who doesn't look like him at all, but that look in his eyes is eerily, eerily similar. A memory I had for the first time. What was that? I almost feel like a memory from a dream. A memory outside of reality. I felt love, loneliness, and frustration all at the same time. The frustration was from feeling like I couldn't quite remember something and getting impatient as a result. I could tell this was something I didn't want to forget, but I still, still I couldn't quite remember it. He eventually let me go. Sorry. I didn't mean to hug you so suddenly. It's alright. I didn't want an apology. Just an explanation. Why did he hug me? I turned around to ask him, but when I saw his face, I couldn't bring myself to do it. Because he looked like he was about to start crying. I could tell he didn't want to hear the question, so I just smiled and said nothing. Most likely, I love him. Because he makes me feel nostalgic, and a good kind of strange. Maybe my friends wouldn't call that love, but I can't deny that I'm attracted to him. I wanted to tell him that he didn't have to cry. I wanted to hug him and help him carry his burden of loneliness. Maybe these feelings would be better described as protection or fondness. But whatever you call it, it's definitely love. It has to be. Thank you for keeping me company today, Guilty. Because of you, I wasn't afraid of the water, and it's been a long time since I felt that way. Thank you so much. Good. I'm glad. Guilty looked as though he wanted to say something. But I could tell that he want what he wanted to s what he said next wasn't what he truly wanted to say. Well, let's get going. I decided I shouldn't be selfish and tell him I'd be lonely if we went our separate ways now. Because I didn't want to cause any trouble for him or make him look sad. Yeah, let's go back. I took his offered hand and we be began our journey back. Before long, the sun had dropped beyond the horizon. I should be okay from here. Are you sure? Yes, my home is nearby. <laughs> you want to come in, sir? Clarice might, might have to tell Clarice to leave, but... <laughs> I wonder if you'll stop by. If I asked someone I met, I just meant to come back to my place, would Guile be mad? But I should at least make him some coffee to show my appreciation. All kinds of thoughts were whirling through my head and I suddenly froze up. I couldn't say anything. Seems like Guilty really did want to leave. He acted really uncomfortable then took a step back. So I gave him a quick bow and said goodbye. Thanks so much for everything today. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll be going now. <laughs> A little bit stuffy. Eh. I need to get some, like, powerful allergy med. Usually the nasal sprays are the ones that, like, work the best. Like, seems like the, the pills don't work if I'm already, like, undergoing an allergy attack. Alright, I waved my hands and watched Guilty walk away. I watched his receding back until he finally left. Oh. These feelings! <sighs> I entered the store's first floor of the house. I threw my keys on the counter and sat down on the bed. I infused power into the bracelet today, so I shouldn't have to watch her closely. Besides, it was a fun day. I wish this could last forever. But the sun set and the day ended. 
I wanted to be alone to accept that. To accept that. Lynette. I didn't realize how painful it was to leave her behind. She looked as though she wanted to converse with me more, and I wanted to indulge her. But I gave in to my desires again. Then all my efforts would, would have been useless. I love her. I want to be with her and take care of her. However, those selfish wants would just be a hindrance to my goal. I'm an idiot. Yes, you are. Hi, Clarice. I looked up and noticed glowing eyes in the dark. It was Clarice. <laughs> Were you watching me? Yeah, I saw you getting carried away with her. You said you would stay away and watch. Why do you get to be so close? <laughs> but he can't. <laughs> if I got close to her and provoked her, she might regain her memories. I intended to stay away from her to prevent that. What about Clarice? Like, Clarice might provoke her memories, too. Um, I guess as a succubus, though, she might not drain her as, like, an incubus would. Reclaiming memories from a previous life. That would lead to the soul from this life replacing the previous one. Which means she'd probably revert back to her previous life as Cupid and become a god again. That's just how miraculous her life as a human has been. Even a slight change in balance and she could become Cupid again. That's the true power of the soul of a god. I understood all, I understood all that all too well. I know. I'm going to make sure I never appear before her again. That's a wise decision. If she regains the memories of her life as Cupid, she might as well be forced to return to Celestia. And if that happens, it really is all over. She'll have to work as Cupid and until the day she disappears for good. I can't let that happen. That That is why I won't get near her. G the moment I entertained the thought of never meeting her ever again, I felt a pain so raw it made me consider death a sweet relief. It hurt so much. No. Why can't I meet her? I was searching for... For her for so long, I was finally able to meet her. I am an idiot. I never felt this kind of emotion when I was searching for her. I wanted to protect her, like a father or a brother. I had no thoughts of ever approaching her. Where did this sudden desire to indulge my emotions and be with her come from? It probably started when I fell in love with her thanks to Cupid's bow. Everything started going crazy at that moment. Loving and being loved was such a fulfilling feeling. I totally lost sight of my objective. No, that's not quite right. I had no idea how dangerous these emotions could be in the first place. The day I fell and became a demon, I've been ignoring all emotion. So I had no clue that I wouldn't be able to control them once I did start feeling them. Lynette. Every time I called out her name, the pain surged in my body. Lynette. I need to let my love go. Lynette. I love you, which is why I have to kill off my own emotions. I know. I will never appear before her ever again. I once again mutter this promise to myself. Clara saw no words left to say. So tragic. Alright, next chapter. Looking for lost time. Oh. These guys... Juno isn't here. Hmm. Should I just I use the voice I use the voice modulator last time for Jupiter? Uh I don't know if I like it, but I don't know, because I always think of Salitis with this pitch shift. Oh, I'll I'll use it and if I don't like it, I can always like turn it off. She's always been quite carefree. I heard she was down in the human realm, but Her aura disappeared, and her divine artifacts returned to us. 
Uh, Mercury? Do we have a Mercury here? Uh, there's no portrait. I can't really put a name to a face, or yeah, a voice to a face. Uh, the goddess of marriage has disappeared. Not just Cupid, but now even Juno. Oh, okay. Um, what does that mean? <laughs> there's no love? Juno's like, she's Hera, right? So, so like, the goddess of marriage and the hearth. So, is love and marriage in danger? This is a most concerning situation. We must deal with it immediately. A week has passed since the trip to the beach. Hmm. I tilted my head as I looked at my phone. No reply yet. Last week I sent Guilty an email, but I hadn't received an answer yet. He ghosted you. You must be busy. I was a little bummed that I had proposed we go watch a movie together. I want to get to know him a little more. Maybe a college student is like a child to him. Maybe he doesn't like me. It's not like I confessed to him yet, but perhaps he got bored of me already. I sighed as I looked at my phone and noticed an online ad. An urban legend about dreams? I tapped on it to take a look and it mentioned an urban legend based specifically in Los York. Apparently there's been a surge in dreams that are better than reality according to the people having them. <laughs> Alan's on the prowl again. He has to eat. And I guess he's just I guess he's nearby, so can't just move city to city. Uh, dreams are so wonderful. They never betray you. and They always show you at your very best. I don't remember what, what voice I gave this past C Cupid Court member. Those aren't even the memories of a current life. Huh? Okay. Sorry, I hear like banging in the background. I think they're just working on the house. What was that? <laughs> My heart was pounding and I carefully looked at my phone. A strange sense of awkwardness, of deja vu. What was going on? Huh? I touched my necklace and felt something metallic. Hey, the necklace is still there. When I looked down, I saw I was wearing a necklace of some kind of bow and arrow design. Huh? What's this necklace? I tried to take it off, but I couldn't. Wait, was it like not there before? Huh? It won't come off. Seriously, what on earth is going on? Okay, yeah, I was kind of wondering about that. Like, getting reincarnated, like... After Alan, like, killed her? Like, what happened to the bow and arrow? Because I think in the past rats he was working with Minerva. Um, I guess if Minerva got it, the world would be over. Um... So I guess she still had it? Is it just, like, part of her soul? What was it? Where did it come from? I was lost in a complete mystery. Well, I guess it's fine for now. I mean, it is pretty cute after all. <laughs> um, you're not more concerned? Like, what the heck? Maybe it's just the class being difficult. I'll ask Claris to take it off for me later. I touched the necklace with my fingertips. It felt strangely familiar. I would talk to Claris now and she would know what to do about it. Or, or else you might be confused, like, what the heck? <laughs> it's like, uh, gonna have to make her fall in love all over again to get it off? <sighs> Are you still watching from the rooftop, sir? I sigh as I glance at my phone. This entire past week, I haven't responded to a single message from her since we went our separate ways. But I'm always by her side, hiding on rooftops, watching from a distance. You little gargoyle. <laughs> so I know she's sad that I didn't respond. Ignoring her is the most heartbreaking thing I've ever had to do. I hope she can become closer to Guile or Austin soon. 
so that she can forget about me. Maybe I could enter her dreams as an incubus. No, that's not good. An incubus appears as a person that the target loves. She'll just, like, appear as Alan. <laughs> if she doesn't love either of them already, then I wouldn't be able to take their form. Matchmaking is so difficult. After all my efforts, I found myself admiring her ability to connect people. When she worked at Cupid Corp, she never used her, used her divine artifact and still had no trouble with matching people up. I recalled wanting to copy her methods, which reminded me to see how she was doing. When I saw her, I felt my heart drop. What? Somehow, her Cupid's bow pendant was back around her neck. Oh no, okay, so that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> but why? She's a human right now. There can only be one reason. She touched me, so her memories of the past are coming back. She's reverting. If her previous soul keeps getting stronger, she'll become a god again. I have to stop that from happening. I should seal away her memories before getting her to fall in love with someone. But how to do that? I can probably find some info about it in the Book of Vanquishing. The Book of Vanquishing was written by a truly powerful demon about the gods themselves. It was written in the hopes of someday getting revenge on the gods. So there must be something about erasing a god's memory. But I, I can only read it in my demon form, and only when I'm alone. I've been committing sins to help speed things along. But I'll have to return to the underworld too. The book can't be taken to any other realm. Just hold on, Lynette. I'll find a way to make you forget about me. I'll erase your memories of guilty and try to cover up your godly soul with that of a human. Then everything can go back to the way it's supposed to be. I need to make up for all my stupid mistakes. I'll have to ask Claris to keep an eye on her while I'm not around. She might complain, but... Even then, she's always been willing to help when it comes to her. Probably because they really are friends. Anyway, I need to hurry back to the Underworld before it's too late. I unleashed my full power as a demon. It was time to leave her side and head off to the Underworld. Back in class! One day during a seminar, I blinked when I saw the form of the the form the professor handed out. A seminar trip? Yes, we'll be going to Greece, a country full of ancient artifacts and ruins. I see. By joining this seminar, I get to go on such an amazing trip. <laughs> I'm so looking forward to this. Oh boy, remember the last time we went to Greece? Got attacked by a manticore. Kyle, Austin, and Claris are in the seminar, so it's a little sad, but I'm still excited to go. Oh no, she's gonna be all alone! My first seminar trip. It'll be a good opportunity to get to know my classmates. Male seminar student. Yeah, I've always wanted to go swimming in the ocean, but you live next to the ocean. Hey, we're going for research. We're going for research purposes, not that you can, not so that you can have a vacation. I mean, you're going all the way to Greece. You might as well enjoy the views. Yeah, she's right. Though it is Greece, so it won't hurt to bring your swimsuits. The professor says it's okay, then let's go to the beach during our free time. The beach. I get my phone again, and seeing the lack of responses hurt my heart. Guilty was so caring and kind at that beach date. I wonder what he's doing right now. Doing black magic. <laughs> I bought some sandwiches. You're hungry, right? You want me to go buy some coffee? Oh, but I can't leave you alone. Has anything been bothering you lately? Okay, good to hear. He really took care of me. I really don't want to think that he doesn't like me anymore. I don't know where he works or lives, so there's no way for me to see him. 
My heart hurt, realizing what a distant figure he'd become. It would be best if I could just forget about him, but I'm not ready to give up just yet. Maybe if I bought him something special from Greece, could that do the trick? Or maybe this is all one big nuisance for him. I just can't figure out how he feels. It'd be so much easier if he could just tell me if I'm bothering him. I look around and saw everyone discussing the trip. I tried to shove my feelings deep down inside and join the conversation. Back to the underworld. As soon as I returned to the underworld, I headed to where the Book of Vanquishing was stored. I flapped my wing, looked around, and sighed. The air here matches me well. I hate that fact. When I first came here, I was disgusted by the smell of rot permeating throughout. But now it's the perf now it's the best place for my body to rest. That's why I didn't want to go back here. Because it would be a disgusting reminder that I don't live in the same place she lives. I need to hurry up and read it. I'm getting more concerned about her. I asked Clarice to look after her, but I'm still worried. The Book of Vanquishing has existed for tens of thousands of years. There are dozens of different editions. It's also written in a demonic language, so it's a challenge to read. I wish I was able to take it with me. Suddenly, I smelled a scent that was wholly unfamiliar to me. What is this? I sensed something strange. The scent was similar to that of a god, but then it faded away. Did a god come through here? No. It seems to have vanished. G I felt a creeping, chilling sensation in my neck. It was like something was watching me. Then the unwelcome feeling disappeared quickly. Is it just my imagination? I looked around and saw a goat's horn and lit a fire, and it lit fire. Ah, almost time for a Sabbath. I should leave before it starts. During a Sabbath, the darkness of this world becomes even stronger. The power of the gods wanes while the demons come into their own. The border between the living and the dead becomes thinner. Some, some know it as the Walpurgis Night. With the Sabbath drawing near, I can't help but worry about leaving her side. But she has her bracelet and Clarice to watch over her. I'm sure she'll be fine. I've She's probably gonna go on the trip. Clarice is gonna be like, where the heck did she go? Because they're not in the same class together. And like, she's gonna be like, I don't want to get the bracelet dirty and like take it off. I keep telling myself that, but I still have an intense urge to return to the human realm. I clasp my hands together and look out at the library. Don't let yourself be blinded by emotion, Alan Melville. As long as you return before the Sabbath. Everything will be fine. I repress the urge to return that instant and head towards the library. The most important thing is for me to erase her memories. A few days later. Oh, Lynette's in Greece! Everyone from the seminar came to Greece! Wow, such a beautiful sea! Ah, it feels good! <laughs> Grace is awesome! Yeah! I'm walking down the streets of Greece with my new friends from the seminar. I wanna hurry up and go swim at the beach! We'll have to, we'll, we'll have to wait to, until day three when we're finally free. We will first head to the Parmigian Temple. Make sure to check out all the artifacts there. If you didn't bring any shoes for long walks, then make sure you buy them now! Okay! We began walking towards the Parmigian Temple. <laughs> uh, is, that, is that right? The thing of Parthenon? Um... Feeling the wind in a new country for the first time, I was overwhelmed by everything. Wow! Amazing! So different from Los York. Even the sea. The color is different. 
beast to see it was a cobalt blue. I suddenly felt a sharp pain deep within my heart. Reese's Sea is beautiful, but honestly, I preferred the memory of my beach date with Guilty. When I see the sea, it reminds me that I was completely and seriously in love. You didn't even prick yourself with the arrow this time. We arrived at the Permigian Temple. Oh no! Don't don't hit any any objects. Don't fall in a hole. Everyone, please observe this pillar. Notice the Doric design at the base. The goddess Athena was worshipped here, also known as Minerva. Oh, she's... she's, she's, she's Celestia! Ah! I grimaced as a sudden headache shot through my skull. I felt a similar pain during during a discussion at the seminar. What was that? I am almost able to remember something. So close. Are you okay? Maybe you're tired from the jet lag. Uh, y yeah. Maybe. She must be right. I think it's jet lag. But looking out at the temple is making me feel worried. I reached up to touch my necklace. I need to hurry. But hurry to what? My memories are getting all mixed up. I feel like I can hardly catch my breath. I need to just concentrate on the professor's lecture. I shook my head to clear it and tried to focus on the professor. But then I looked at the temple again and got restless all over again. Couldn't concentrate on the tour at all. Hey, where is she? Uh oh, Clarice, I knew it. Like, Clarice, like, not, she's not in the class. I can't believe... Lynette, you didn't tell your friend you were leaving to for Greece? <laughs> Uh, Guile. Hmm, you haven't heard? She went to Greece for a seminar trip. Huh? Seminar trip? She went to Greece? No way. She went there alone. I need to go after her. I was asked to watch her. Oh, danger, danger. During free time on the third day. Oh, no, she's gonna go to the beach and drown, isn't she? I was walking around the city in Greece. Everyone else is at the beach. I declined to go and came to the city instead. I wanted to keep my memories of guilty within me a little longer. I was afraid that if I went, I'd overwrite my memories of him in the sea. That's why I didn't go. Well, at least you won't drown, but are you alone? <laughs> Besides, I might drown again. My time in the ocean was incident free because guilty was there. I truly believe that. Perhaps it can all be chalked up to coincidence, but it was a fact that something would always happen to me when I swam. Oh, that mug over there is cute. If I bought him, bought it for him as a gift, would he like it? I walked around the city looking for souvenirs. That earring is cute too. I wonder if it'll look good on me. I took the earring and found a nearby mirror to check my reflection. And I realized my necklace was missing. Hey, it's gone again. I felt around my neck and I couldn't find it. The weird necklace was gone as quick as it had appeared. So strange. It comes and goes like a light bulb about to go out. Is <laughs> it not worried and weirded out? In recent days, there are times when the necklace would be around my neck and other times when it wouldn't. It was like someone was flipping a switch to make it appear and disappear. This is why I hadn't been able to show it to Clarice yet. Whenever I tried to ask her to help me take it off, it would be gone. Hmm, maybe I'm just tired. I might just be seeing things. Girl, girl. Maybe perhaps the necklace never existed. Ah! I bumped into someone and nearly fell over. I somehow managed to catch myself from falling, but... My rubber bracelet must have caught on the person's clothing as it snapped off my wrist. Uh-oh. No. No. Too many, <laughs> too many things going wrong. What a coinky dink The cobalt blue and white bands fell all over the ground. You gotta be kidding. I need to hurry and gather them. 
This is my precious bracelet I had since childhood. I can't let go of it just because it ripped. Besides, Guilty warned me that I should always wear it and even kissed it. I was hurrying to pick up the pieces, but there is something off about the person who bumped into me. He had eerie eyes, oh no. Something's wrong with that person. As if he's possessed. Then suddenly a strong wind blew and I was knocked to the ground. Ah! My shoulder hit the ground, knocking the wind out of me. I raised my face into a blast of wind and froze. I saw the same dark cloud that I'd seen before in the water. It found you! Uh-oh. But no. This was different. It wasn't just a cloud. Uh... Ooh... It was... Ag, the stink is finally gone. From out of the dark cloud came... It was a demon, straight out of a horror movie. Huh? That was Demon 1. Did I give him Demon 1's voice? I was finally able to break it using a human of all things. Man, what a pain. But now I could finally deliver you to- Deliver you to our Sabbath. N no I got up and started running as fast as I could. But the demon was hot on my heels. But what does that mean? Sabbath? I had to find somewhere to run, but where? If it really was a demon, then maybe a church? But why am I suddenly being attacked? I didn't have a clue. I did know, however, that it was all over if I got caught. I need to hurry. I need to hurry up and run. Haha, <laughs> you can't escape from us! We've been waiting for this opportunity for years! Oh, there's a third demon. Um... It was an opportunity we couldn't miss. You better give up. I was stranded by a trio of demons. There was nowhere for me to run. They reached out for me and suddenly the ground split and opened up. Deep within the rift I saw a horrifying scene. Uh, uh, amorphous black mass. It was a world without hope. A world that smelled like burning and death. Oh, it's like a... Like a ripped seam. So, <laughs> what are they called again? The, the little portals? The cafe and Chante? They were everywhere. <laughs> Hell, the inferno, the underworld. All these names came to mind. A throng of hands appeared and grabbed my legs. They started dragging me down to the ground. No! No! Someone help me! Guilty! There was nobody to hear my screams. The world I knew slowly grew more and more distant. In the end, I'd finally been captured by that dark cloud I'd spent so much of my life fearing and running from. In a last ditch effort, I tried clinging to the stone street. But I was no match for the three demons and was dragged down into the depths. Oh no. Uh oh. Are we gonna be like, be sacrificed? <laughs> Where am I? The demons were quickly hauling me away. I didn't know where I was, but what I did know... it I did know it was the birthplace of that dark cloud. Torches had been lit. Goats had been sacrificed. I learned about this in history class. A Sabbath. A meeting of demons. But I thought that was just some made-up fantasy story. Everything I thought I knew about truth in the past was crumbling in front of me. The screams and shouts of demons were all around me. This is... Are we in a bad ending? <laughs> there are at least ten of them in total. Nobody's gonna bother us here. Now then, give me your soul! Four! Okay, number four. It has to be the most delicious you do it, you see. Can't wait to find out how it tastes. The demons bared its fangs and reached out towards me. No, please! I wanted to fend them off, but my arms and legs were held tight. I couldn't move a muscle. Too bad you can't summon, like, your Cupid powers, like... Didn't Alan say that Cupid's bow would, like, eradicate demons and make them disappear? 
Their long claws are primed to tear my clothes apart. Oh. There are disgusting tongues, their fangs sharper than any wolves, came slowly closer. I'm going to die. I'm going to be devoured whole. Oh, Lynette! Huh? Just before the fangs could sink into my flesh, I felt the embrace of a pair of warm hands. These hands! I know these hands, Alan, came to save her from the evil demons! He's gonna be like, my hero! And then he's gonna be like, you look funny. They belong to Guilty. Be gone. What are you doing here? Damn it, we earned this! I don't care who you think you are, you can't have her! How dare you try to hog such a tasty snack off for yourself! Did you not hear me? I said get lost! The voice itself was low and calm as I, <laughs> as I screamed. Harry, did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire? Dumbledore said calmly. But his anger rippled through the air, spreading across the area. Gah. The other demons gnashed their teeth and eventually slinked away without further confrontation. Then it was just me and him. Before me stood a demon, fierce winds howled all around us. What are you doing here? I'm sorry. I'm afraid you must have me mistaken with someone else. We've never met. He stared at me with ice-cold eyes, but beneath the cool gaze was a sign of deep relief. Even a hundred horns and wings couldn't disguise that sparkle in his eye. It was the same glint I saw in the person that rescued me at the pool and took me to the beach. It was guilty standing before me. A human like you can't stay here. You need to head back to your world. Come on, hold on tight. Guilty lifted me up and launched us both into the air. Guilty. No, that's not your real name. I'm sure he has another name, but it wasn't coming to me. Who are you, really? Who have you been all this time? Next chapter! Kinder than anyone! Alright, and then that's been saved! And we gotta end things here, because we've been going for quite a while. Alright, let's... <laughs> Let us save! Over here! Okie doke. Alright, she's been saved again by Alan! All these... all these... All these meetups. I wonder if she's she's gonna revert back to Cupid, right? Like, she's gonna remember or something, but what's gonna happen then? Like, it seems like being Cupid, like, consumes her. Like, it consumes her soul. Like, well, she. I don't know. It, it made it sound like becoming a human would, like, let her soul last forever and reincarnate. Like, but does she, like,. Get her lifespan back if she goes back to Cupid. I don't know. Or does, or does like the godly power just like snuff her out? <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to find out. Okay. Well, I hope you guys are having a fun time, and I'll see you in the next episode. Oh, bye bye.